Hello again, and uh, welcome to the Unimind's session dedicated to sustainable energy. Uh, as all sessions, also this session is being recorded. My name is Peter, and I'm honored to be your host today along with my co-host, Borut Kuchivar. Uh, Unimind's festival is organized by uh, knowledge and transfer offices of, of uh, University of Maribor and University of Ljubljana in association with our industry partners and supporters from the innovation community. Um, the main partner of the event is Novartis in Slovenia. And this festival would not have been possible without the support of the Republic of Slovenia and the European Union under the European Regional Development Fund. In this parallel session, you will give a snapshot of competences, innovative projects, and good collaborative practices in the field of sustainable energy. Uh, each speaker will have a three minute long presentation followed by a three minute uh, period for questions and comments. After all presentations, we will encourage you to have an open dialogue. Uh, we are especially interested in how to join forces in the future development trends. But before giving the floor to Borut, I would just like to present some uh, basic rules as well. I will be a timekeeper. So whenever you see me or hear um, this sound, let me just... Uh, this means kind of uh, the end is near. So if not already, uh, also please rename yourself in a way we know uh, what to call you and how to communicate. Throughout the event, we encourage attendees to keep cameras on so you can see each other and you can discuss like you would do in normal circumstances, sort of. In, uh, we encourage you also to post uh, and ask questions and make comments in the chat, uh, so in the Zoom chat. During the presentation, please use uh, Zoom chat box and after the presentations you will raise your hand and you will be allowed uh, to speak uh, directly. So let me also introduce uh, Borut. Borut Kuchevar uh, has over 20 years of uh, journalistic and editorial experiences, mostly with the newspaper Finance and a few years with Neunik and Journal as well. He joined Finance, Environment and Energy Division in early 2014, before which he monitored the economy in various positions as a journalist and editor. Uh, he is also a university graduate economist and uh, for, 10, for over 10 years, he was also employed in banks, mostly in treasury departments. And uh, with that in mind and uh, the various fields he can easily discuss with, I'm giving the floor to Borut, who will be moderating uh, this session. Thank you, Borut, and uh, Borut, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the floor. And uh, well, it's a privilege for me to be, to, to have a chance to talk with this group of people, because um, I think you, Peter, you made a great job to, uh, to, to put together people from, um, universities, people from industry uh, to discuss the same, the same topic, the sustainable energy. Um, sustainable energy, I mean, we talk a lot uh, those days, those months about sustainable energy. It's a very popular topic, but still I believe we will learn a lot of new things today from our speakers. Um, so, Let's start. Our first speaker is Mr. Tine Sel Seliak. Um, he is assistant professor at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Ljubljana. Uh, he will speak about the implementation of, AU, of EU climate directives. And uh, Mr. Seliak, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. I will now share my screen. And let's try it. 
Good day, everyone. My name is Tine Seliak from Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in University of Ljubljana. As engineers do, I'll try to be practical. So let's see what it takes to bring the EU directives to actually work in real life. Throughout the existence of the EU, member states have been, of course, agreeing about targets on renewable energy. These are collectively, these were collectively being imposed by several EU directives. And now nothing is simpler than to take the proposed targets and simply implement them. It's pretty easy and the job is quite well done by this. But it's not so fast. There are over 10 directives that had to be taken into account in the transport area alone. We have energy efficiency, we have renewable energy, fuel quality, and fuel infra infrastructure directives. All these directives are interlinked, impact each other, and present a challenging tokenization case, which was not yet resolved even in the most advanced societies. On top of that, the binding targets are ever changing. With the new Green Deal and National Energy and Climate Plan, of course, the perfect examples are these. So the pathway for optimization and minimizing the trade-off between different targets is far from linear. Instead, the interrelated impacts have to be addressed in an almost endless feedback loop. There are different types of alternative fuels. Each has its own multiplicators. Each presents its own CO2 emissions. An important aspect is also life cycle assessment and the role of distribution network for different energy carriers. These all relate to circular economy principles, but before this, the renewable fuels have to be in line with current and future rolling stock technology and ultimately also cleaner targets. These again impact backwards the energy efficiency and selection of fuels in the first place. So basically, this is a full circle. Although it looks complicated, there is indeed a possibility to reduce this mess again to linear approach. First, we pack it all together by taking into account every bit of detail that is necessary. Then we condense it substantially and put it, of course, under the roof of Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in Ljubljana. And it again looks as simple as before, a one-step procedure that requires an enormous pool of technical knowledge. So how can we do it at the University of Ljubljana? Because we know, develop, and bring to life all necessary technologies. There really is no big picture without low-level knowledge behind this. Innovative combustion concepts for cleaner engines, renewable waste-derived and synthetic fuels for minimal CO2 emission, component-level and system-level predictive models in every aspect of energy management, fuel cells, batteries, and systems for management of residuals and recovery of energy and materials. To name just a few that are related to energy applications and we work with them on the University of Ljubljana at Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. On the top of that, all of these ideas are always, I mean always, brought to life in realistic environment, prototypes, and also in marketable items. In a very brief summary, this is a small part of how we contribute to a more sustainable future. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Seliak. Uh, thank you for your um, very instructive speech. Um, we now have three minutes for a discussion. And uh, if there is any, any idea or any question for Mr. Seliak. Well, it's still early, I, um, I believe. Uh, so um, let me ask the first question. Um, listening to you, Mr. Seliak, I, I found out that there is a paradox in the EU. On the one hand, we have very ambitious climate laws, directives, um, but on the other hand, technology, which you talked about, I mean, we lag behind the US, the China. Isn't it paradox that we import China technology to, to reach our climate goals? Correct observation. Um... In my opinion, the legislation is the main driver for the technology development. So by implementing the legislative framework, we are also at the same time giving ground for technology development. So the ambitious goals of EU are definitely a good and very good start for starting and for developing the most, uh, the most innovative results in terms of renewable energy. And additionally, if I can add, all of these goals in EU are, yes, they're very strictly, the, the, the goals are very high, the targets are ambitious, but still we have a lot of things that are not connected and there's still a lot of work to do also on the legislative level to bring everything under one roof 
and to, let's say, provide a common targets for all the member states. Well, okay, that sounds, sounds great. But still, I mean, the, the, the batteries in China, in USA were developed without any climate le uh, legislation. It's correct, because the driver was the market there. And in Europe, since we have a slightly different market, the legislation has to be put in place, uh, put, put, put first, in the, uh, first into place. But hopefully this is, this is already happening and there are very strong, uh, very strong incentives, very strong uh, financing opportunities to bring this on and to develop it. You know, for the, for the case of China, for example, we can look at them a bit differently. They were somehow uh, in, on the edge of the industrial revolution and they had somehow um, in, in, in a majority already skipped this fossil part in between. But generally still, all of the energy sectors that they have, it's strongly reliant on coal, emit massive amounts of CO2 emissions. However, for the distribution infrastructure, they merely jumped over to the e-mobility and to the electricity. Since in Europe, we were strongly reliant also on the fossil fuels for centuries ago, we are now at this stage where China was, but we are doing it on the, on the ground of uh, fossil fuel infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question, I believe it is for you. Uh, Unfortunately, if, if I may, in interrupt, we will go uh, on and then we will uh, go back to this question if, okay. if it's not going to be answered uh, at the end in the uh, discussion part. Okay. okay, thank you. So, uh, well, if there is no further questions for Mr. Seliak, I suggest we move to our next speaker. This is um, Mr. Andrei Kitanowski. He is uh, vice dean at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering also at the University of Ljubljana, and he's also head of the laboratory of refrigeration. He will speak, I believe, about renewable storage, heating, and cooling. Right, Mr. Kitanowski? Thank you very much. Um, I will also share my presentation um, and speak in about three minutes about the activities. Um, so um, before going to, to what we do, actually, I would like to, to focus on the renewable storage heating and cooling which is a, a very important part of the sustainable energy and one of the most important issues which regard this is actually the energy efficiency at energy efficiency in any kind of uh, process transformation or device so another point is actually related to waste heat recovery in different kinds of systems i do not speak only about the industrial wastes uh, but, but also about other types which can be utilized as well as the thermal management imagine only the, the large data banks which we deal with uh, today um, or computers um, then the use of uh, renewable energy, energy sources is of course very important but, but we should not forget the natural sources which can also provide very important heat sinks um, then the thermal energy storage is an important part of any kind of heating and cooling system in the sustainable energy. Well, these kind of systems should actually cope with, with, with the, the, the time variable um, production and demand in different kinds of energy systems and devices and should be very well coupled also with the decarbonization and the coupling of different sectors. Uh, all these issues are very strongly related to the environmental protection. For instance, the new refrigerants, which are harmless, um, then we should also keep in mind that the living comfort and health should, should not be disturbed by, by going into new kinds of technologies. That we should keep in mind that, uh, that different kinds of, let's say, um, uh, environmentally uh, friendly energy source, sources should be used, but should provide as well the diversity, reliability and the security of the energy supply. And finally, we should also keep at the technological development, that means the, the development of future kind of technologies with um, the future needs of the mankind. Therefore, uh, for instance, the, um, our laboratory in the faculty focuses on the industrial R&D where we develop new kinds of heat exchangers. We develop uh, new kind of household appliances which are, are energy efficient. 
uh, we improve the district energy systems. We improve the heat pumps and refrigeration systems by putting in the predictive or let's say smart control, but, but also different kind of new kind of processes. And as well, the thermal management of and different kinds of energy systems from the industry to the, let's say, the building sector. However, without the basic and applied R&D, we would not be able to build the future of energy systems. This is why we are developing a new kind of technologies in heat pump and refrigeration, where we lead the fields in solid state refrigeration. Um, we also develop a revisited and existing alternatives actually to vapor compression with the aim of having actually environmentally friendly refrigerants and very high energy efficiency. We are focusing on new kind of thermal storage systems, keeping in mind that they need to be connected to renewable energies or let's say waste heat. So in order to cope with this to high temperature, high power density, and also the seasonal storage, which is capable to be coupled with, with the uh, coupling of sectors, with different sectors. Thermal management is extremely important and it may be provided in different levels. Uh, what we do at the moment is the pioneering work in thermal control devices and uh, routers and also the circuits, which means that we develop thermal diodes and switches, thermal logics and com thermal computing as well as thermal transistors. This is a brand new area of, let's say, we could call it the renaissance in thermal sciences. And we also deal with the thermal management of different kinds of energy, or let's say small electronic devices, which is also an important issue. This regards also the powertrain uh, and very small, but, but very powerful energy sources where we deal with the microfluidic different kinds uh, systems, let's say electrovetting on dielectric, ferrofluidics, and restriction systems. This is shortly about the activities which we do, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Kitanowski. Um, well, is there any question for Mr. Kitanowski? Yes, there is. Uh, Please. Uh, so, uh, Jure Vitrashek. Uh, is uh, post, uh, posted a question, what about synergies among energy grids factors on community scale? So maybe uh, Professor Kitanowski, if you could kind of elaborate on that. Thank you. Um, I mean, um, I'm speaking about the thermal uh, sector. So uh, the thermal coupling actually we, with other sectors, we, which are related, let's say, to, to electricity, or let's say if we speak about the power to heat. Um, and uh, other kinds of, of uh, coupling of sectors, I think that's extremely important. And we have a lot of different possibilities to do this. Well, but we should always keep in mind that we should, any kind of conversion of energy, which we do is, should be very energy efficient. So for instance, one of very stupid things is when people think that the direct conversion of electricity in low temperature heat is actually some smart idea. This should be actually prohibited. Um, and, uh, but of course, we, we can do a, di a conversion of electricity into heat by many more efficient uh, means. For instance, one of these is actually heat pumps. But, but there are also other uh, possibilities where we could also um, transform the, the high quality of the electricity into the valuable, let's say, um, high temperature heat, and then reuse it also in other kinds of uh, processes. Thank you, Mr. Kitanowski. Um, I would also, me myself, like to ask you a question. Um, we all have district, I mean, in many cities, there are uh, district heating systems, but uh, no distant, uh, district cooling system. Can we expect one soon? Um, actually, in Slovenia, we have two type uh, two uh, district cooling systems. <laughs> so one is not operating <laughs> uh, uh, because of the Stojice project did not uh, develop to the, the commercial uh, uh, level, but uh, another project was um, put in place in the uh, city of Velenia, uh, where there is a small district cooling system, which is actually uh, distributing a uh, cooling system, which is distributing cold to different kinds of buildings in the center of town. 
So uh, district cooling systems are, of course, uh, very important, but we should not forget that they should not be too large because we, we need to keep in mind that we need to dig, uh, let's say, or put uh, very large pipelines to transport uh, cold. But they can offer us actually the possibility to use different kinds of, let's say, heat sinks. Um, uh, reliability is much larger. We can use different kinds of energy sources also to produce cold. And this is where, where this kind of technology is actually very important. So, for instance, if I go to the bigger towns, making smaller islands of cooling makes really sense. Because not only that we, we make uh, a cooling of certain area, we, which is usually should be dense, but, but we can also use the heat which is produced by this. Let's say, for instance, waste heat from the the condensation uh, part of, of the, the, the chillers, let's say we can uh, use it very um, uh, efficiently also for the heating purposes. This is why, why district cooling uh, systems should be actually developed. But at the moment, I think there is, uh, um, th there is um, a mixture of, let's say, the, the, the business interest and the, the, the municipality interest, uh, we, we, which brings or, let's say, um, uh, stops or blocks the development of these systems uh, in reality, especially, for instance, in Slovenia. Well, thank you for this um, answer, Mr. Kitanowski. And um, our speaker number three, this is um, this is Mr. Darko Buricanec. Um, he is the head of laboratory for thermo energy energetics at the Faculty of Chemistry and Chemical Technology at the University of Maribor. Uh, Mr. Goricanec, I, I understand you will tell us how to make high temperature heating much more greener. Is it correct? Yeah. Thank you very much. Share the screen. Oh. I used uh, this to zoom the first time that uh, I must find. Professor, uh, uh, there's a green button, share screen on the bottom, and you can press it and then choose the, uh, the right screen. Uh, yeah. No. Um. Okay, I find me in my computer. Um, I will Be do it because I, I the first time I now now use this uh, the Zoom. Uh. Um, I will do it for you. So I will make a presentation, and uh, you can just talk, and I will go further. Can you see my screen? Okay, I see you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Right. I, I change the, the, the address for this uh, uh, presentation because uh, I de develop a new uh, device, uh, innovative device, which with this device I can uh, 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 fuel efficiency increased at about more than 199% uh, compared to the low heat value. This is for natural gas, diesel, and uh, diesel fuel, fuel, liquid petroleum gas, or uh, other fuels. This uh, innovative de device uh, uh, enables the renewable energy sourcing implementation for high temperature uh, heating by more than, uh, than 50% and reducing the CO2 emissions by more than 50% compared to the hot uh, water gas boiler. And this device, this new device, is uh, have a very good economics um, compared to the existing high temperature uh, heating technology with uh, existing now. Can you give me another? Here is the, this uh, device. This is, uh, this is a schematic presentation. Uh, of this device. In this device consists for uh, cogeneration unit, mini cogeneration unit, 
which produced heat about uh, 20 kilowatts and to the power 8.5 kilowatts. And this mini uh, cognition unit used this uh, natural gas. gas. Uh, another device is uh, low temperature heat pump. The source of heat, this heat pump is underground water or air or geothermal water or geothermal heat exchanger. This is another uh, 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 low temperature heat sources. The, the next de device is a heat accumulator. This heat accumulator connected with heat consumer. The heat consumer used this uh, heat from this uh, uh, heat accumulator. And the, the last device is here is called condenser of fluid gases condenser. And the low temperature heat from this heat accumulator going the first, this is about 30, for example, 35 degrees Celsius going to the, uh, this condenser of exact, exact uh, gases of the cogeneration unit. They are heating at about a few uh, degrees Celsius. For this example, heating at about uh, three kilowatts to from 35 to 37 degrees Celsius, and then go this uh, this uh, heating water to the heat pump. Heat pump heating this uh, water up up to 55 degrees, and producing about 3.9 kilowatts additional heat. And then uh, go, uh, this water uh, temperature of 55 degrees going to the uh, the cogeneration unit. And they're, they're heating to the, the, this uh, target temperature. This is about 50, 65 degrees Celsius. And when you have uh, looking about how much energy we, we put into the, the, this uh, uh, he, uh, heating device, it's about 30.1 kilowatts nat natural gas. And we produced about 57 kilowatts of this uh, heat. And this is about, we uh, increased the efficiency of natural, natural gas. We, we uh, increased uh, to the 189 degrees uh, percent, 189 percent. And when, when we need to, to uh, produce low temperature, that this efficiency is uh, larger and with uh, larger this uh, uh, this equipment that this uh, cognition unit is larger then we can produce up to 230 uh, uh, percent efficiency of gas is uh, up, up to 230 percent can you give him another and here, here is uh, economics. Please uh, just uh, wrap it up if you uh, can, Professor. Okay, and this is economics. This uh, uh, equipment working about 1,900 hours. And uh, we, when we compared with the existing uh, gas boiler, we, we see that the producing emissions of uh, CO2 emissions is about uh, half of the uh, then we produce it in this uh, uh, existing uh, gas boiler. And uh, payback period of this equipment is about 7.9 years. But when we uh, have more operating hours, about 3,008 hours, this is normally for uh, this uh, district heating, then uh, um, the payback uh, period is about four, four years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Goricianets. Well, um, it, it was very interesting listening to you about this device. Um, I believe there are some questions, but still I have, uh, I have also some. Uh, who is this device for? It, is it for business uh, buildings, for residential build, buildings, for neighborhood? Who can use it? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is uh, it's different. You know, the, this uh, device is now implemented for one company in, uh, in Ptui. This is uh, for industry. When the industry, you can use this device, there's more economics because the industry uh, work in producing the hot water for 
the food production for meat, production of dairy production, they need a, a lot of this uh, hot waters. And then they can work in this device about six to eight thousand to, to eight thousand per year. And then payback period is only two years. But you can heating the, the resident buildings and uh, hospitals and uh, hotels. And there I can reach more this uh, operating hours. And then economics is higher. For this reason, I have these uh, heat accumulators. Then this uh, device is very small. But these uh, devices only for this uh, demonstration device is only 8.5 uh, kilowatts for electricity. And I changed with this device, this uh, uh, 250 kilowatt hot water boiler, gas uh, with the gas uh, hot water boiler. I changed this, but this device must work in more hours than these hot water boilers. And in this time I co collected this uh, heat in these heat accumulators. For how long does this device in Ptui work? This is completely new. Now, now we finished in now in spring. We finished and now now is the tested this device. But with this device, I can change some um, in this device. I can use this device in the district heating too. But I must make some changes because in the district heating need a higher temperature. And uh, with this device, we can in Slovenia can uh, we. Um, uh, the the, um, the consumer of the, the this uh, natural gas we, we need only the, the half percent uh, fifty percent low uh, uh, this uh, 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 natural gas that we can use for for heating the houses or um, the buildings or industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Professor Goricani. I wish you successful business with this device. And uh, business makes money, and money makes the world go round. Um, no, we will not listen to Liza Minnelli and her uh, musical cabaret, but we will listen to Mrs. Lasta Carmel. She will tell us how to finance the energy transition. Mrs. Vrasta Carmel uh, is a director of local energy agency Energap. This is Carmel, please. Uh, hello to you don't need to hello to, uh, hello to everyone from Energy Agency of Podrauje. Uh, energy Agency is public energy agency and it was established in Maribor region to be like a, and perform like a one-stop shop to be motivator and facilitator in the field of sustainable energy development, especially in public sector, but we of course work, work also in the private sector. So we are a center of knowledge ideas and try to implement the sustainable energy projects. So we are dealing with strategical planning, development in a private sector, public sector, we prepare action plan, we support the implementation of energy action plans, we monitor achievements and projects Progress. We are also expert for different financing resources and mechanisms to invest energy project and we also cooperate in more than 30 uh, European and international projects, you know, to share our idea, knowledge, best practice. Uh, but on the end, we also work a lot on the rising awareness on energy efficiency, renewable energy sources and sustainability with different target group from kindergarten to elderly people. Yes, we try with our stakeholders, we try to solve the energy problems that can affect and have reduced impact on climate changes. We try to introduce good energy management, which we all know that is basic to, to run good uh, energy efficient project. We try to use energy rationally, also our stakeholders, users, that they would understand what really the rational use is meaning. 
and of course that we will would all use really an rene renewable energy sources. So we think the energy efficiency first. So we work a lot on the central energy management system. In our system, there is around 300 public buildings. We do energy bookkeeping, energy audits and certification for them and try to implement the good uh, energy management practice in, in their everyday life. We do on the public lighting, but not only on reduction, the costs and the energy use, but also to make it um, user-friendly, nature-friendly, not to make too much uh, lightning pollution. So to find the combination between really energy efficiency and uh, less use of energy, but on the other side to still keep safety and all other uh, regulation uh, to follow. The field of renewables, uh, we try not to just um, list the renewables, but also to give the good information. Here is example of the photovoltaics on the primary school. We try to make it a technical um, uh, presentation of the achievements from the sun. Uh, together with the uh, University of Maribor, we also use sometimes the different maps of potential. And also we try to combine the energy use and the energy production action to find really the profile, how could we benefit the most from the renewable energy sources. Like I said, uh, we try to do the new financing mechanisms. We all know that there is a lot of money around us, but it's just not right uh, distributed. So we try to find um, financing for energy project through public-private partnership. We try to do really energy performance contracting, as we know that this, this could achieve really good results. And according to the latest um, legislation, we also try to establish energy community and try to find how it is possible to finance the energy project through crowdfunding initiatives. Yeah, we are very proud that in last year, we just finished the energy refurbishment of 24 public buildings in municipality of Maribor where we cooperated, so the investment was uh, around 11 million euro and it was, uh, we achieved great savings, about 4 gigawatts of energy, 1,200 tons of CO2 per year and of course there were also about uh, 450,000 euros savings on uh, energy cost. So I think this is all to explain what we are doing, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Carmel. Um, a short question from us, my side. You you uh, mentioned energy performance contracting, but there are just few companies in Slovenia offering that business, uh, that service. Uh, what's your opinion? Why is that so? Yeah, you knew the energy performance contracting really to be successful need a win-win situation. So it needs very well established relation and knowledge from the public partner and also from the private partner. And we see also that they both need a facilitator in between to understand the view of the public partner and its obligation regarding the certain documentation and budgets. And on the other side, also understand the private partner with their business uh, models. And I think it's uh, to develop in the whole range and to have a lot of uh, market uh, players, we all need to go through different phases. So I think at the moment there is a lot of knowledge in Slovenia, so we have this good point. And now we need another um, some projects that we will be all aware that uh, during good knowledge and during uh, really understanding each other, we can most benefit of. We have some still, I will say, historical and cultural uh, barriers that we are not really trusting that the public-private partnership could be a win-win situation. Yeah, if we have also some, not uh, as shining example, but also some uh, problems. But I think during the developments, more knowledge and more such a project, we will be all more secure that uh, such projects really are beneficial to both partners. And this is valid for both for, for private homes and for industry. Uh, of course, so. yes. Thank you. Um, our next speaker comes from Faculty of Energy Technology, University of Maribor. Um, this is Mr. Bertic. I had a look at one of his papers um, yesterday and it was very interesting. I don't know if he will talk about this paper. Uh, today, but we might be surprised. Please, Mr. Vertic. Thank you very much. 
Do you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Super. Okay. So, just go. Uh, so for today's presentation, um, I chose the uh, one of our uh, pilot projects. So this is the uh, actually residential uh, photovoltaic system. Um, and uh, this system, uh, photovoltaic system was equipped additionally with the battery storage and also with the monitoring and information system and uh, the, actually the goal of uh, this pilot project was to obtain the long-term data for our research activities and also to address the disadvantages that we can see here uh, of uh, solar energy. So providing uh, uh, actually electrical energy from the, sol from the sun. And the main disadvantages uh, are that uh, we have uh, uh, quite big weather influence. And also um, during the winter, especially during the winter, we have uh, the lack of solar power. Um, so for complete self-sufficiency, of course. And the, also the, the, the next goal of our research is to achieve self-sufficiency, not only on the yearly uh, uh, basis, but also on the monthly, uh, daily, and maybe also on the power basis. So it means, that, uh, it means that we have accessible energy all the time that we need it, uh, of course, renewable energy. So um, this is, uh, you can see on this slide, actually the pilot house in Slovenska Bistrica. Uh, this house is uh, quite a, what was selected because it has uh, good characteristics, uh, because it has good insulation and also um, all the consumers are electrical consumers. So we actually can now observe if we can provide enough electrical energy also for heating, of course, through different, uh, 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 let's say, uh, devices uh, with uh, better uh, efficiency. And uh, uh, also the uh, photovoltaic system is in, is in net metering scheme and uh, operation mode uh, is maximum self-consumption. Uh, self but we observe two, two parameters. One is self-consumption and one is self-sufficiency. Uh, uh, self-consumption is important for utilities as self-sufficiency self, uh, self is important for the owner. Uh, here we can see the measurement system. We have four points measurement system. And we, we, we measure in 15 minute intervals uh, energy, which is uh, received from the grid, which is sent to the grid, which is um, sent to the uh, storage, so battery storage, which is uh, received from the PV models and which is also sent to the, uh, actually to the uh, consumers. And uh, also in this house, we had also all, all, all installation available and we could uh, put all the facility, all the devices in the garage. Uh, this uh, on the right side, you can see on the left uh, bottom left picture, you can see the solar inverter, uh, which was already installed and everything else is our, uh, our work, our development. Uh, okay, here is the basic data about the technical data. Uh, it's a uh, uh, solar power uh, of uh, photovoltaic system is six kilowatts. Battery inverter is 3.6 uh, kilowatts. And uh, here you can see on the figures how your battery looks like. And it's uh, seven kilowatt hours for, uh, for, for, for uh, actually initial tests. We also plan to upgrade it. And uh, here is the, our actually, um, uh, actually product. This is our, uh, based on our knowledge, we programmed it, we designed it and it's uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, monitoring system with the background information system is to um, present to the user who is not actually from the field of uh, energy that he can uh, use this data and to, 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 to get the whole picture about the building and that he can easily decide about further investments. Of course, this, is, this was the test on the pilot buildings, but it will be also a very interesting uh, product for the industry. And here is a in descriptional way, not with a symbolic way, also described the power for all the measurement points that I mentioned before. And here, I, here you can see the most interesting uh, graphs and this left, left bottom, uh, right bottom graphs. Uh, you can see um, actually the uh, rates between production of uh, from solar panels. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We are teaching, but uh, please uh, conclude if you. Yeah, okay production from solar panels um, uh, and uh, consumption, and then the energy sent to the grid and energy received to the grid, the right uh, uh, figure percent uh, um, yearly level and the left uh, daily. 
And here is also the characteristic of this living lab that we use. Uh, here is the list. So to get the holistic energy picture of building, um, to um, actually educate proactive users' behavior, and to make also optimum operation and optimum investments. And uh, also for demonstration of different projects uh, and different uh, products, innovative products of companies, they can be also integrated. And also the owner is very open for further uh, cooperation. This will be shortly from my side. I hope I explained it uh, clear enough. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vertic. Thank you for this information. Um, well, because we don't have much time, uh, just a short question. Do you expect this system can be, um, can be uh, produced for a market use? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> can be used for market use, but uh, usually residential, uh, so house owners and residential owners, they are uh, mostly uh, look at uh, these investments in such systems from the um, economic side. So, uh, and uh, we believe if we, if we integrate a different producer and uh, for other parts of the system, uh, and also with this uh, additional, uh, our product, innovative product, I think, I think it's very interesting for the market. And so it's also very open and we access to all uh, data and can uh, access to all analytics and uh, can easily make it also the, um, actually the custom made for the user if it needs any uh, special, uh, special information. Okay, thank you. Um, well, uh, we move to next speaker. Uh, he comes from the company Engen, N-G-E-N, which is probably the largest European investor in big Tesla batteries. This is Mr. Clement Ricard. Mr. Clement Ricard, welcome. And the microphone is yours. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. So, do we see the presentation? Yeah. yeah okay. So, uh, hi everybody. I'm Clement Ricker from company Engen. And I would like to use this short presentation to present the most important use of batteries and their benefits. Uh, like my predecessor was already explaining about batteries and uh, home solutions. Um, we in Engen also work on that. Basically, Engen is an aggregator. Uh, we provide auxiliary services like uh, frequency restoration for transmission system operators. Um, <clears throat> to explain, basically, we provide backup power when the grid needs it and we take excess energy when there's too much energy in the grid. Of course, we use batteries to do that. Uh, in addition to that, we also provide our clients turnkey battery solutions. So let's move to the use of batteries. Uh, I will just focus here on the most important ones. So first, uh, in the outer circle, we have the transmission system. So like already explained, uh, the batteries can be used for uh, frequency restoration as well as for balancing. So the biggest advantage of the batteries is uh, the immediate response. So basically, they can immediately give or take energy and they can be very precise. So we use them for positive regulation or negative regulation. So if we move forward to the distribution level, all the same as in transmission applies there. But in addition to that, um, we can provide also other services. Here's, here, I think uh, the most important thing we can do is peak shaving or uh, demand charge redu reduction. So basically with the batteries, uh, we can provide this charge at times of peak demand. So here in Slovenia in the two hour uh, peak time. And this enables, this enables us to shave the demand charges, which are quite, quite big. And by doing that, we save money to the owner of the battery. And of course, we reduce demand in the critical periods. So it works for both sides. So similar to that, uh, next to it is load shifting. Basically, with the batteries, we can shift the energy consumption uh, from one point to in time to another. So basically, the batteries, uh, with batteries, we create a really steady consumption. So all this uh, relates to renewables. So with the use of batteries, we can increase the size or build additional solar power plants, and of course, then increase the sales efficiency. 
So if we continue further, now we have a combination of uh, production from renewable resources and batteries. So we can create a localized grid that can really, in the end, operate independently. So in Engen, we started from the other circle, uh, working services for the TSO, then moved to distribution. And now we are already installing the small household batteries. So for instance, uh, I have my own uh, solar power plant at home. Um, I produce as much as I consume over a period of year, but in reality, I'm only about 20% self-sufficient. When I add my battery, uh, I will increase this to 60%. So that's really great. And uh, this means we will enable more PVs to be installed. And at the same time, we will not cause the problems to the grid. And this is, I think, how we will contribute and attend to sustainable energy in the future. Okay, thank you. Those are the three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ricard. Thank you very much. Um, well, um, one question. Um, a few weeks ago, Engen started to sell the small, uh, small home battery storage systems, uh, Tesla ones. And uh, what the market says, what the customers say, do they like it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a lot of interest, uh, a lot of calls. Of course, the, the system is great and they, they like it. At the moment, it's still quite expensive, but uh, still we're quite satisfied with the, with the response. And also we're starting with the first installations already. And of course, the, the clients now are uh, solar power plant owners and uh, a lot of clients who, who are deciding to go and build a new solar power plant are now thinking of adding the battery. Of course, a lot will depend on the legislation, what will happen in the future with net metering and uh, all this is, all this go, go hand in hand. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rekar. And uh, our next speaker comes from the company Ellis, Transmission System Operator. This is Mr. Rulash Kerin, Deputy Di Director of Asset and Project Management Division. Uh, Mr. Karin, the, the floor is yours. Please switch on the, the microphone. Cool. Do you, do you see my screen? Okay. And you can hear me. Very nice. So, So I would like to give a very brief presentation on, on who we are and what we do. So Illes is a transmission, uh, transmission company for power transfer in, in Slovenia. Basically, we, we, we have a, a lot of responsibilities which are governed by the law. Uh, I will not go into details of, of that. What's important is, is the fact that we are the people that basically you never see, but uh, you strongly rely on. Um, what what do we do? What 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 is it all about? We we hear a lot of buzzwords. We hear, hear a lot of uh, changes are going on in 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 how to approach to the energy uh, um, generation, transmission, distribution, and consumption. Basically, the infrastructure and the one that operates the infrastructure is basically enabling this. So it's, it's, it's very important to understand that there is a huge complexity enabling all the topics that have been discussed by the people uh, before me. Uh, and also, we need to understand that we are not the only ones. Uh, in Slovenia, it's LS, but the uh, total European network is, 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 is really big. It, 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 it goes up to Russia, UK, uh, and, and even some remote islands. Uh, but you see on this slide that it's, it's very complex infrastructure, a lot of, a lot of power lines. Uh, this is good because we live uh, in a very good neighborhood, but uh, at the same time, the problems of your neighbors also become your problems. So it's like in an apartment building where you have one of the neighbors listening to the music out loud. There is no way you can stop listening uh, to that. Uh, 
so in order to 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 prevent operational or even nature cost uh, caused um, events, we need to be very smart and we need to operate the system in a very very uh, uh, progressive way. It it cannot it, it 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 does not happen only in US. It does not happen only in some European countries. It also happens in Slovenia as. Uh, is seen in February 2014. I am sure that most of you, uh, not living in the regions of Slovenia where this happened, do not remember this event. And thanks to us, this is the case. Uh, in order to address all these dynamics, all these issues, LS is, of course, conducting a lot of research and application projects. This is just a small list of those projects, and they range from e-mobility to infrastructure improvement to uh, um, market transactions and so on and so forth. One of the projects, for example, is the SynchroGrid project, which is an international project between Slovenia and Croatia, and for which LS helped or has succeeded to secure about 80 million euros uh, of uh, financing. And most part of that came from the European Union. I'm very happy to say that this is one of a kind projects currently in, in, in Europe and probably also in the world uh, because it, cons it considers voltage control on a, on a two state level, which is quite unusual for transmission networks. Um, we are not alone in these stories. Uh, we do these projects with Slovenian uh, universities, faculties. This is just a small list of the universities which we cooperate with in, in these projects. And I'm really happy that uh, in the past 10 years, we had more than 50 projects resulting from our work, which have been then uh, uh, performed together with the universities the value of these projects is more than 3 million euros. So basically we are a, a good partner and we have a stronghold uh, in the Slovenian educational system. But it's not just the commercial part that we are cooperating on. So of course we go to, to, to the, to the um, wise men at the university to, to get some additional information. So they, we ask the, the universities to consult us. We also do projects with them. But we, we, we also realize that at some point, it's not just about commercial relations, it's also about uh, non-commercial relations. So we start doing R&D with them on a non-commercial basis. And I'm really happy to say that LS now has a, a organized approach to mentoring uh, students, uh, uh, master students, uh, PhD students. So these guys, when they finish their studies, are not fresh from the university, but also have a lot of a full backpack of experience that can help them either to develop their career with us or to go somewhere else. And then always remember about Slovenia industry, helping them in achieving their career uh, uh, milestones. Last but not least, all this knowledge that we get from the projects, from real life projects, just an example, we have uh, learned today that uh, we have a lot of batteries in Slovenia. I'm not sure if you understand the, the, um, the progressive aspects here. Three years ago, there was no battery in Slovenia. Today, we at least have five installations uh, already in place or ongoing, which means that we go from zero to 20, about 20 megawatts. So these are megawatts in three years. This has, of course, a huge impact on the power system. When it has an impact on the power system, it has on the society. And of course, we need to develop this in certain way so that we also are able to educate our uh, newest or younger generation. What does it mean to basically be uh, confident when it comes to renewables, to energy transition, and maybe new technologies. It does not just mean benefit, benefits, but it also means responsibilities, uh, which can be only properly addressed by the knowledge transfer and exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kirin. Um, just let me let me challenge you. Uh, well. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, we went from zero to 20 megawatts in three years, uh, 20 megawatts of battery storage systems. Uh, what will be in next three years? So in 2023, what is your estimation? Well, that's a really good and challenging question. And um, I, I cannot answer it. I really cannot answer it. Um, 
based on on the experience but what we we see the trends this one this i can tell you so we see the trends that uh bigger power producers so power plants uh realized that they have a lot of empty space in their switch yards yeah because power plants are big and they usually have a lot of space and some of them are even thinking of uh compensating for the dynamics which cannot be achieved by the conventional generators to supplement this with energy storage and they have all the means for that they have the space to put the batteries they have the high voltage infrastructure and they have the primary source of generation so basically they are they are becoming more and more flexible with that and we see the trend but not in the application or installations we see that people's mind change and i assume that in the future time we might be seeing some of these installations uh, happening okay thank you very much we go on the time is running after us and uh, next speaker should be mr van smarrow from the company chronotherm but i have to apologize him um so we we go to mr matei geyser mr geyser uh, he is managing director of slovenia energy cluster tekes t-e-c-e-c -E -E hello Mr. Kaiser, I, I think you will speak about energy management in the military. Is that correct? Still, still, still the same. Yes, but 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 uh, anyway, can I proceed with the with the presentation because I have only three minutes, as I understand. Can I share my screen now? Yes, please. Just, just a moment, please. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much first for inviting me. And I'm also glad that I'm someone who will conclude the previous presentation because uh, all previous uh, presenters uh, really um, uh, go uh, went deeper into the, the topics, technologies, and also research and, and, uh, and demonstration pilots. So I'm really glad uh, to conclude, conclude these um, all um, topics. So basically, um, my presentation will be focused more on, on the topics of all event as innovate together and also in regards to sustainable energy. So be, let me, okay. Basically, before continuing, I would like to really emphasize that, that in Slovenian research organizations have always been keen to join R&D collaboration, to join R&D collaboration, and of course, to support companies in their innovation projects. Uh, and, and especially in regards to TETES, which has now already been on, on the market almost for 20 years, and we are holder of different strategic partnership or clusters, all related to the energy as energy cluster, also as smart building partnership, and as you can see now here also energy environment defense partnerships. I would like to, to really emphasize that uh, universities and its members, uh, their members, uh, faculties are really strongly involved also as the founders, also as the members, and, uh, and deeply involved in also in the research and development project. Uh, so basically, to, to come um, to the energy topics, uh, as now we are all talking about more and more integration and, and collaboration between different topics, as, as might be 10 or, or five years ago. Uh, now we are talking about, as already was presented before, we are talking about generation, transmission and distribution of energy, not just electric energy, but also uh, energy uh, as a heat and so on. And on the other side, we also are uh, talking on producers and consumer on the other side. So there is a strong um, opportunity. There are a lot of opportunities for collaboration on those, on those topics. On the other hand, this is totally related to the energy. On the other hand, uh, distributions and generation also consumption. On the other hand, we have now also smart buildings. Smart buildings relates to, of course, smart buildings partnership, but also these are topics, uh, future smart buildings, energy efficient uh, smart buildings related and integrated in advanced smart communities and also with the with this basically smart nearly zero energy building that means with with involvement of all different technologies which are uh, useful for for making and and developing the, um, those buildings more um, more energy efficient. Of course, we are dealing with, with residential buildings and also commercial building. And uh, in regards to the, those uh, uh, presenting topics of, 
of energy this, uh, and also on the topics of smart building we are now on the topics of uh, technologies in in defense currently ongoing also in the smart uh, partnership uh, energy and environment partnership in defense we see that now there are really a lot of topics uh, focused on energy uh, in implementation and involvement of renewable energy sources and also hydrogen as was already forementioned so basically there are the, the topics are quite uh, interconnected and this is also a possibility and also opportunity for collaboration just one question energy efficiency environment uh, and climate in uh, energy efficiency and environment and climate changes concerns in the defense and security sector i was all, always questioning myself why and and the uh, 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 the answers are quite simple uh, simple of course the reduction of cost uh, not just because I was asking myself, because you know, when there is a military operation, they they destroy uh, so much that we cannot uh, get this kind in, in in more than ten or a hundred years uh, uh, again. But the, the 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 basic is the need for reduction, of course. The estimation estimation of cost for diesel transportation for Afghanistan differs, but it is from one liter of diesel uh, for more than ten dollars or another uh, another estimation which was presented uh, two weeks ago on defense um, one of defense conference one gallon that means 3.78 liters for 500 dollars of course because of of transportation and cost and everything the second need is protection of lives and and infrastructure of course because transportation of that's uh, is, is quite usually also have also concerned with security and so on. And, uh, and uh, I must also say I'm doing this for six months or something like that, um, um, being more involved in, in defense sector now. Uh, environment protection, climate change is now becoming really a top topics also uh, and all climate awareness, a top topic uh, of defense sector. Uh, how can defense sector be leading, have, uh, has a leading role here? So there is a huge impact also on this and there is a lot of amount, amount of uh, investment also in the future. And of course, because of all four mentioned, there is also the best uh, need for the best energy environment technology and solutions also in defense. Uh, so to, to some kind of answer to that, uh, um, to, to all, all, all these challenges in energy and environment, uh, Slovenian energy, uh, Slovenian Minister of Defense in Tetsis established a Slovenian Energy Environment Partnership in defense. And with all those topics uh, for mentioned, but I think that this can also be a new opportunity to innovate together with all stakeholders from research uh, sector, uh, from research organizations, also from the sector of energy or any other uh, companies from different topics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Geyser. I will ask you a question a bit later because um, we have uh, 15 minutes left for a discussion. And um, I, I suggest we start the discussion with a question to, to Mr. Geyser, because a military, as far as I know, is uh, well quite involved in the hydrogen research business. And there was a question from the audience as well about hydrogen. Um, how far is this hydrogen research in military? Uh, let's say that, that I'm not basically quite familiar with all those uh, activities in, in those uh, these topics in, in Slovenia. And, uh, but basically, the, there are, were some activities 10 or four, uh, 14 years ago, basically with a re research organization when they were focused on developing a research and developing of fuel cells and membranes for, for, for them. But currently, what is the most important, currently ongoing project which was started with the support of the European Defense Agency was the project Risk Hub. Uh, Risk Hub actually stands for uh, Defense Resilience Hub Network in Europe. And it was really started uh, and initiated by Slovenian uh, site. Uh, and it probably it, it would now become one of the uh, really all European project for, for hydrogen. Also some of, of already, um, uh, some of uh, participants of today's event, I think they are also involved in ongoing activities in Slovenia. In Slovenia, within also this Risk Hub project, uh, they are trying, uh, Minister of Defense are try, uh, is trying 
to establish, I think, three uh, hydrogen hubs, and one is in uh, Kran, uh, where there is a military barrack. I don't, I forgot the, the name of that barracks, but basically, I think there is ongoing activities uh, to find private partner, uh, to establish private partnership, uh, um, uh, public-private partnerships, how to deal with, with this in the future. But basically, there are some already infrastructures uh, also related to, to hydrogen and basically it, it has everything has to do with hydrogen and, and, and use of uh, transportation and how to use it in mobility also for, for, for whole Europe. So this is the, the one really, I think, top, hop, uh, uh, top uh, uh, topics of, of what is going on on this in Slovenia. Uh, yes, thank you. Well, hydrogen is really hot topics everywhere globally uh, regarding the green energy. Is there anybody that would like to continue this discussion about hydrogen? There was a question from the audience, as I can see, about the, the conversion hydrogen ammonia, if I understand correct this formula. I can, uh, yeah. If I can, just a few uh, remarks about the hydrogen. Please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, based on two years data that we um, actually uh, obtained from this uh, pilot uh, site that I presented, we also already conducted also the study about the possibility to make a self-sufficiency. We, we found out that on the basis of uh, extension of existing PV system, uh, significant extension, of course, more full extension are possible. And on the basis of the batteries, it won't be possible, it will not be possible to uh, achieve this, uh, uh, this stage of cell sufficiency. So we made the uh, research about the, including the hydrogen. And uh, we found out that based on this uh, energy that, has, that is already available on the site, uh, he would need, um, uh, he would cover 62% of all mm -hmm electrical needs for heating and uh, electricity. So it means that with, uh, uh, by enlarging the uh, capacity of solar power uh, in the house, on the house or near the house, he, uh, he, could by one, uh, he could enlarge this system by one third and achieve the complete self-sufficiency. So this is one, uh, of the, uh, one of the results of the uh, uh, research. And the other is that um, the amount of hydrogen that he would uh, need for that. So it's about 144 kilograms of uh, hydrogen uh, that can be stored and then to, uh, that can be used during the year. And uh, the advantage is, of course, because this is long term, uh, it is long term uh, uh, storage. It's not like a battery that is usually used as a short term storage. So I think that in the future, this will have a significant uh, role. The hydrogen will have significant, significant role in the uh, power system. Uh, yes, I read that paper yesterday, and I was surprised uh, your estimation of the price of the whole system. So hydrogen production, hydrogen tank, uh, photovoltaics, battery storage, um, it's about 50,000 euros plus something. Is it correct? This, this, this is not so high. Yes, it's, it's not so high. We made uh, some predictions also to include uh, the neighborhood into the project because it is... Uh, in my opinion, it makes sense to, uh, to, to, to make a pilot, new pilot. We are also uh, looking for the partners who would provide the, uh, the, the different uh, devices, so uh, fuel cells and also the storages. Uh, it is uh, actually a community project, more or less, so that we have uh, one, of, uh, one installation under one substation. This is the idea uh, in the, uh, for the next maybe pilot project. And, uh, uh, we actually made the estimation, and it's not so it's not so high. But for uh, one uh, one um, actually uh, person or one owner of the house, it's uh, too high. Of course, also fifty thousand uh, euro. So we have to think about uh, how to how to make uh, more accessible this uh, um, uh, products that will enable the uh, hydrogen production and storage. Storage is the most uh, expensive, of course. Um, we have also many activities and we are looking for the partners, but uh, I think that uh, the um, uh, products are not easily accessible on the market. It's very difficult to find uh, 
the partner who will, who, partners who will go uh, in the, such a pilot project. This is my experience. I, I was asking around and trying to apply also for different uh, calls. And uh, if you have any ideas, so this is the opportunity for me to say <laughs> maybe that uh, we, make, we make contacts. And if you have uh, ideas who, uh, what to about, about fuel cells mostly and storage, we can uh, continue with cooperation. Well, thank you. Somebody else about hydrogen? Um, maybe just to follow up uh, further on with the hydrogen idea. Um, I see in the comments uh, the question about conversion of H2 to CH4. Um, what is maybe the view uh, on the infrastructure use of hydrogen? So that you do not have a dedicated hydrogen, uh, dedicated hydrogen infrastructure, but that you are using it uh, as a substitute of CH4 or methane in the grid or uh, you are using it, uh, let's say, in the form of any other energy carriers. Uh, what are your opinions on this? Uh, should we go towards additional conversion to, let's say, lower quality fuel by making CH4 or NH3? Or is the way to go with dedicated uh, storage of hydrogen alone and use of it, uh, let's say, in a specially tailored devices such as fuel cells or maybe other, uh, other applications? Thank you, Mr. Seliak. <laughs> Any more idea about hydrogen? Maybe Mrs. Kermel, is it possible to get finance for such a system for a family house with uh, hydrogen production and storage? Please switch on the... Yeah. Mic. Yeah, I think there are new technologies and if you find the right partner I think it is possible also I hope that the future financing especially from the implementation green deal and investments for the new financial perspective this will also be a big um, uh, possibility for financing especially some pilots or even some uh, bigger projects I'm, sh I'm sure thank you Mr. Kerin Ellis is involved as you said in, uh, in uh, important hydrogen research projects what do you expect from it well, every project we we start investing in uh, and performing um, is can be looked at from different perspectives. Of course, to solve a certain uh, situation or a, a problem, but on the other hand, also to test and learn. Uh, what what we are seeing now is that a certain compromise or or some certain um, mutual understanding will be required on how to basically change or, um, well, yeah, adjust the typical ways of, first of all, of the, how the infrastructure operates today and how we would like to use it tomorrow. And it's, it's not just about the infrastructure, it's about the consumers, it's about the generators and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> it's, 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 it's very easy, let me have a, a an analogy here. It's very easy to, to buy a good and fast car, but only some people know how to drive it efficiently and up to its limits to, to get most out of the performance. And uh, all these new technologies, uh, it's, uh, my aspect on that is it's, it's, it's something that we need to do. It's something that we need to research. And we as Ellis for sure have that capability. We have that opportunity. Uh, we, we are keen on doing that. That's why we have the whole division just dealing with the strategic innovation. I'm not sure if there is any other company in Slovenia that has a division, maybe a department, but not a division. Uh, however, it, we need to be aware that it's like growing vegetables. All these small applications remind me always on, the, on, on your garden. Yeah, we like to say, well, I have my potato, I have my carrot, uh, I have my cottage, whatever. Yeah, um, but at some point when the weather is not good, when, when, when you have, when, when the veggies uh, catch a disease or something, you still go into a nearest store and buy your food. And we, we, we are responsible for this part. When your project is not successful, when, 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 when you see that you are not self-sufficient, 24 seven, 
then of course we need to be there to support you. Of course, we, we, we see a lot of benefits, but we just need to find, I think all these different fields of use and all these different fields of research and development, they need to be brought together at some point. And I think such a discussion already is a good start to see what will be in the future. And out of this, also ALIS takes its uh, learnings and we try to then in a smart way, drive between the obstacles. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirin. Should we move? Maybe just, maybe yeah. just one thing. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, saw the link to the explosion here in the chat. <laughs> um, okay, uh, but uh, I think that this is the most important issue that we find uh, a very controlled way of producing storage and also uh, using hydrogen. It's the safety, uh, safety. Uh, aspect is very important here. And uh, I was in February in uh, Los Angeles uh, in, on one conference um, about uh, uh, catal catalysis catalysts. And uh, um, professor from University uh, Berkeley, uh, he uh, actually exposed that uh, he see the future of storage in um, a gasoline, in benzene. In benzene. I, I'm not the chemi uh, chemical engineer, but He's, uh, they are uh, focusing on the, the, this aspect. This is one of the issue of storage, just uh, a remark. And there is a link from audience about the, the explosion of Toyota hydrogen yeah. fuel car uh, somewhere. Let, let, me, let me just maybe, um, <laughs> I, I, I also clicked on the link. And yeah. it reminded me of something. Um, there were also a lot of links and <laughs> pictures of exploding or burning batteries or battery storage systems all over the world. Now, you see, this is an aspect that nobody is talking about. Uh, let's think about this. This is a new technology. Everybody thinks it's or accepts it to the point that something starts to burn in the middle of the city, a huge battery energy storage system. And uh, public is sometimes very critical. And the learning from other countries is, if you have this in a, in, in a city or near the city center, you need to do everything to stop such events. Because once the public sees this, sees the fumes, sees the clouds, they will never allow an installation again near this location. We have examples from Vrhnika on, on something else, but if you noticed, all the biggest energy storage systems are always far away from the public eye. Yeah, and, and burning and explosions and this, this is something that we, po pe we people naturally, I think this is a natural way of responding, are afraid of. And it's not just technology, it's not just what we want, it's not just the energy transition. We also need to make public understand, uh, accept, uh, and also uh, um, promote this. And at the same time, be aware that not everything always goes well. And if something bad happens, we should not just close the store, but rather use the example to make it better next time. But the reality is that people sometimes, they just close the door and say, never again. Yeah? And we had this situation with nuclear power plants. We had this situation with battery energy storages. Now uh, imagine that you have a pump or whatever location to fill up your car with hydrogen and something goes wrong. Nobody will allow you to put another installation near his house. It's over. So it's very important, not that the, just that experts talk about this. We also need to educate the public. It, it needs to be a public debate so that if something goes not quite as planned, the public supports you and not stops you from developing further. Thank you very much, Mr. Pirin. Um, since we are out of time and um, because um, many researchers are in the group, I think your, uh, your words are uh, very well ending of this conversation. Of course, we could talk um, for many hours more, but uh, at some point um, we have to finish. 
So thank you very much for to all of you for um, your speeches, for your discussions. Um, I really enjoyed any minute with you. And uh, well, I hope uh, there will be some more discussion um, later next weeks, next months, next years. Uh, thank you very much to all. Thank you very much also to the audience. And uh, I give the microphone back to Peter. Well, thank you, Borut, and thank you uh, to all the panelists and the attendees for great insights. Uh, this has been truly uh, an amazing, I would say, uh, discussion. We had a lot of things uh, going on, and uh, but unfortunately, time goes fast and we have to finish. And uh, we will keep the debate alive in the web app and uh, mobile Kuwait app, and uh, which also enables you still to, um, to go in and to meet uh, the other speakers and other attendees. And um, you know you can talk to them, create discussions, uh, uh, meetups, and share articles and more. Um, you can find already links in the Zoom chat box, uh, which uh, will kind of guide you on how to download, uh, download and use uh, this app. But uh, so thank you for this. And uh, but but now I have to also kind of draw your attention to our two list events. Uh, uh, so one is uh, on the 23rd of November, which is going to be a Google workshop uh, for students. And also our uh, last event uh, on the topic of future society on the 23rd of, 4th of November, uh, where we are expecting uh, more speakers which will cover uh, specific challenges of collaboration in the fields of uh, society and future and, uh, and, and et cetera. So, uh, Links are in the Zoom chat box and uh, uh, you can follow uh, that. Um, we hope you enjoyed this session. Um, your opinion matters to us, so please give us your feedback. Um, also, uh, a link in the Zoom uh, chat box. Uh, find more information about Uniminds uh, or uh, the organizers, uh, Knowledge and Technology Transfer Offices of uh, Maribor, University of Maribor and University uh, of Ljubljana at, uh, on uh, the website of the festival or uh, at our uh, websites. So uh, my name is Peter. I wish you all the success and I thank you for joining us at this session. So uh, with that in mind, I wish you a nice week and uh, weekend as well. So bye.